Governor Avenue Research Library is made up uh, of several components or segments of collections. The Atlanta uh, City government made resources uh, in public libraries available to people of African descent in 1921. Prior to that time, the libraries were segregated and there was no facility, public library facility for black people. Uh, the facility was right down the street on this very street, the historic Albert Avenue. And it was called loosely, they had a sort of several names. I think the uh, name that is most acceptable is the Carnegie uh, Library for Colors. Uh, it was a Carnegie school building, and uh, Carnegie, of course, gave much funding for libraries, for public libraries. And um, this was the facility. Uh, from there, um, several other um, branches or segments opened up along the way uh, in the 40s and the 30s uh, throughout Atlanta. In the 70s, the very early 70s, I think in fact 1970, it was decided that the, the major part of this collection was something called the Negro Collection. And it had been nurtured by several fine people uh, as it moved from place to place. It was decided that these materials should come together and be a special collections. At that time, these materials were named the Samuel E. Williams Collection, and lo and behold, I was in my early years as a librarian, and was given, had that job to coordinate these materials, bring them together, and make them into one. They would no longer circulate uh, out to the public, and the main reason for that is because most of the materials were very fragile some of them back to the 20s, and this was the 70s. A lot of them had been damaged. They were constantly being lost or misplaced. And they were also in a facility that was not appropriate in terms of the climatic controls. Uh, it was a regular facility with no uh, kind of ventilation or humidifiers or dehumidifiers to take care of the collection. So there was always a plan to one day establish a facility that would handle, bring these things together. Uh, 16, 17 years ago in May, we came into this wonderful facility and um, there began the Auburn Avenue Research Library on African American Culture and History. If one does not gather and maintain its history and its legacy, it stands to be forgotten. It stands to be lost as a history. And for people of African descent, that should not happen. You know, there are a lot of lost societies. There are some societies that exist that existed, and there is no relevant information about them available. Uh, especially written information. You may find some artifacts, some uh, items that they had in their civilization, but nothing particularly that speaks to their culture, uh, their uh, lifestyle, their interactivities with each other. So at a research library, an African American research library, I think that, um, I know that to maintain, to gather and maintain this history of the people allows the people to live on and on. The legacy cannot be forgotten. Okay. We here at the Auburn Avenue Research Library started gathering materials in 1921. And uh, so it defined itself at that time, and it still does, as a facility that is very clearly committed to uh, providing resources to make uh, one able to do, or to provide resources so that one is able to do the kind of research, even up to the dissertation level in some cases. 
uh, research libraries can be, often try to be a little bit of everything. We tend to be more purist in the fact that we like to support our research resources with activities, programs, lectures, uh, dance performances, plays that will further encourage uh, people to want to use the resources, to want to use the documents, the books, the films, to, to um, incur, to support their own knowledge. We like to think that our programming of events and our lectures uh, raises the curiosity and it leads a person to want to do more. The general term diaspora is scattering. It means a scattering. It can mean a scattering of most anything, really. And one of the most fascinating things I think about this library, and most of the other research libraries that do Africana studies, is that uh, we try to have a little of all of it. Yes, this is called African American research. I wish sometimes I could change the name to people of African descent research. But maybe it is fair to say the depth and depth research can be done on African Americans, but you can get some information about any African descended people uh, within the, uh, of any dias of a diaspora. So we have information at a study level on black Peruvians, black Canadians, uh, black Germans very fascinating group of people. Um, so for me, the diaspora means this gathering, this scattering of people, and then it also means the bringing together of resources that can tell about the scattered people. It's important to tell the story of the diaspora to people of African descent because knowledge is empowering. Once you have information, once you have facts, once you have a story, it allows you to be empowered to do other things, to study further, to, to go into a profession that is of interest to you. Once you know about yourself and about what other people like you have done, you then know that almost anything is possible. It's important also because in many instances, there is a consciousness, a raising of consciousness that comes when one begets, gets an opportunity to learn more about himself or herself. Uh, you, you become very conscious and aware of who you are, who you've been. Uh, the great civilizations, uh, going all the way back to biblical days, back to Egypt. How empowering is that? 